Kia ora, no maharamai, ete iwi. Welcome to Māori Conversations with our lovely Māori Party candidate for Hauraki Waikato, the auntie, the gorgeous auntie, Donna Pokere Phillips. No maharamai. Welcome, auntie. Kia ora, Tuiana. Kia ora, how's your week been? Uh, it's been very productive. Um, uh, we've done uh, quite a bit of mahi uh, in regards to the campaign and it's stepping up as, as each week goes along. So I'm getting more and more excited uh, in our progress. And next week uh, we're going to do a, a think tank on Tuesday night. Uh, um, so there's a, there's a post that's gone up to tell the whānau if they're interested in contribution contributing uh, to come to Kirikiriru Marae on Tuesday starting at 10. So we've got um, three breakouts, I guess, from 10 to 12, 1 to 3 and 3.30 to 5.30. Uh, and that's going to contribute to our overall national uh, plan around our policies. So that's really exciting. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Awesome. And what else has been happening this week with you, Auntie? Um, well, I, I, I did your, uh, what is it called, vlog? Oh, vlogs. Yes, we did some vlogs oh. today, that's right. And you were filming this week in the gardens? Uh, yes, and then we also filmed our, our Believe uh, videos, which was awesome. So thank you, Tuihana, for contributing to that. And we just uh, got a little bit of a look into to one of the videos. I think it's gone up already. So, so it's been posted up already. And that was an awesome day. That was a whole day uh, um, doing our video uh, clips for the campaign. Oh, awesome. I'm really excited to see that. I'm really excited about next Tuesday. And and we'll remind everyone at the end of, it, um, of this quarter about those details. Uh, we want to welcome, because we've asked... Um, Matua Julian Williams to open our karakia this evening. So if we can, no maharam, I welcome Julian. Or I affectionately know him as Jules. So um, you're up. Him as Jules this evening. <laughs> so no maharam, I welcome Jules. How are you? Oh, very good, thank you. Mate. Very yeah? good. Got my cup of tea. Sitting on a blanket. Couldn't ask for much more. <laughs> Yeah, oh, geez, I remember about oh, 18 or 19 years ago that cup of tea would have been something different. Yes, yes, it would have been a different type of drink with you at a karapu called Legends or Orbit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, before we start our conversation, we'd love you to open us up with karakia this evening, please, Jules. So we're going to hand it over to you. Kia ora, thank you. Kia ora korua. Uh, tēnei te mihi atu ki a korua i tēnei pō uh, tui hana, tā tu hoa. Uh, mai rāno, koki ki a koe e tona, uh, tēnei te mihi atu ki a korua. Koki ki ngā tangata, uh, kua tae mai ki te whakarongo tā mātou kōrero, pāna uh, ngā take Māori uh, mō ngā take o Aotearoa. Ngari, uh, mino e tātou. <coughs> ko tai ki taua wā mai te kore, ki ngā iwi o te pō, tātou o te ao mārama tātou i hui ngā pauteri. Atu ingo mai tonu atu ana hau, ki a hui hui mai tātou ki a karaki a tahi ai tātou pai Māori. Tu o tia ki ngā mārama tangi e te atua, i tō mātou ki ingi me te kāhui a riki, Ki ngā tina ne Māui wiana, tai no o ki a mātou katoa i te pō nei a Nā u te kuro o rea Nā u te kuro o rea Nā u te Gloria, rire, rire, ho, boy, my dear, Kyora. Kyora. Kyora, that was lovely. I always love the vibration of Paimariri. It's so lovely. Um, mm. Now, Jules, introduce us what gorgeous marae you're from, which area of Waikato Tainui or Waikato you're from. We'd love to hear a little bit more about you. Ah, kia ora. Yeah. Um, so Julian Williams Aho, uh, ko te iwi o Waikato, Ngāti Makirangi Tōku Hapu, uh, hoi o tainui me Waiti Tōku Marae. Uh, I tipo ana au kei uh, Ngārua Wahia. Um, yeah, from uh, Waiti and hoi o tainui, 
uh, out um, past towards Tahuna uh, at the back of Lake Waikari there. Um, and I grew up in Ngaro here uh, yeah, alongside uh, our next guest who's, who's about to come on with us, place to hunt with you. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's me. I'm the youngest of six. Um, wow. Because I had four older sisters and a brother. And um, yeah, uncle to many. And I've got uh, married my wife, Tirina uh, Rakina. Uh, she's from up the far north, Ngati Hine. Uh, and um, we have two beautiful boys, Anthony and Atlas, uh, a four-year-old and an almost three-year-old, so 15 months apart. Wow. It's and fun. Are, yeah, <laughs> they're pretty cute. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, know you played, I know you played for, for a pretty uh, stink rugby league team there for a while too, hey? <laughs> yeah, hey I, I see yeah. you were in the right jumper this evening. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Paul Mokolo, we're our New South Wales jerseys, but the Warriors won, so I'll take it. New <laughs> South Wales, give me a break. Sorry Anyhow. Um, Logo is on the side here. I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't fight. So tell us, um, what are you doing these days, Jules? What, what kind of mahi are you doing? Um, so just acknowledgement to Donna, because when I first met Donna, we, uh, I was working for Waikato Tainu, and Donna was at the Regional Council. Um, so we got to know each other quite well there and, and our different interactions. Um, after working for the tribe, uh, my wife and I started Tehuia Natural Resources Limited. I'm still focused on the natural resource environmental space. I've been mean, doing some contract work, still around the awa. I love it, can't leave it, um, take responsibility for her. And so I do contract work with the Waikato River Authority. Uh, and some smaller work um, out around Hotapu with Ngati Hawa and Ngati Kuruki. And um, yeah, a few other bits and pieces, some contracting work. Um, and one of the other things, hence the sign behind me, is um, yes. being um, asked to join a team and nominated to stand for uh, the Well Energy Trust elections. Um, so yeah, it's uh, a lot of exciting things happening to you. Sorry. Um, it sounds uh, like a lot of exciting things. Yeah. It Very sounds much. like, yeah, yeah. Um, it's so hard to not, you know, so just so people know, a bit of fuck up between uh, Julian and I. We've known each other for close to 20 years. Yeah. Um, Jules has seen my sons come from young babies to now budding young men. Yeah. And um, yeah. and it's just, so, uh, again, I say it's lovely to see you and your family blossom so much. Can I just just uh, go back a little bit? Um. Where did your interest in, um, well, obviously you grew up in Narawawa here, so you were right by the Awa, but where did your interest in environmental issues come from? You know, what was kind of, what was that spark that, that you had? Did you have that in high school or did you go to uni? Can you tell us a little bit about where, where that kind of passion and love has come from? Most of it was about growing up in Narawa here. Spent a lot of time up the Hakurimata range with my cousins um, and swimming down the river, playing tiggy. Uh, I was too scared to bomb off high things, so I'd keep to the just stay in the water. But um, my mother, I didn't realize I was learning tikanga um, and matauranga Māori um, from my mum when we were going to get uh, koda up in the streams in Hakurimata. And she always used to do little things like just have a look underneath. If they got some eggs, yeah, put them back. Um, ah. Don't go eeling, um, putting back certain sizes. Well, now I know why we do it. Then I didn't. Mm. I thought, yeah, I thought we just had enough kai. Uh, and then at high school, I picked up geography in my last year and I actually didn't know what to do, but I scored really well <laughs> in my exam. And so I picked up resource environmental planning at the university, um, got to do classes with Tina Perot, uh, Papi Paki, Donna Flavel, and them were a little bit uh, above me. Um, and so, yeah, it's really cool seeing some of those uh, friends made back then in the same space. Mm. And at university, when I finished, um, I was asked to go and uh, talk to Guy Hori Awa, and oh, we all know Hori, uh, at Waifano Trust. That would have been in 99. And um, the first project they put me on was to write a cultural assessment for the Huntley Expressway which only just recently opened. Mm. And I sat in a room not knowing what to write, um, but I thought I'll try this. Um, I learned a few things from Varsity, do some matrix 
kind of things like that. And um, and you had Hone Honui, uh, you had Nelson Hittit, Nani Miri, all these komats were crying about mm. Topri, uh because there was going to be an 80 meter cut at that time. Whilst it would have been about two kilometers away, it was still a cut into her veins, and, and they were crying, literally crying. And I started to mm. understand in the passion and, and the whakapapa they had to our natural resources and kind of took it a bit more seriously and yeah. started looking at mum a bit more. Yeah. And that's was, uh, that, that meeting stood out for me. And uh, that's kind of what uh, triggered that emotional response to be better engaged and mm. alongside people with the Spring Hill Prison to do, I mean, no try and prevent those things or do what's best for iwi. Uh, when people want to work on developments. But that was a meeting that stood out to me is when you're seeing your elders crying. Yeah. Or, or your moaner. Yeah. It's interesting too because I know that this is also a passion of Auntie Donna's is mm. um, environmental issues. Um, I, I'm interested also in how where this transition and, and why our well energy, why are we standing, what, what kind of is motivated um you for that you know to kind of say hey i might be your guy you know <laughs> yeah. um i i used to be i thought it would be i'd try something different and, and i've got to admit watching donna watching Bori, watch angeline and others putting their name out there to be tested is something yes. i've never done now back at high school um you were nominated by your peers to be head boy or head girl and so i was nominated uh, and then a head boy. And then as I grew up, people were uh, oh, oh, pushing is not the right word, but encouraging me, as Māori do, to to get up and speak. Uh, Lady Raiha would make us stand up and talk to presentations that um, were not, weren't even our area of interest. <laughs> and she forced <laughs> us to learn, forced us to, to respond quickly. And... Um, encouraged us then to do research on, on everything else. So we learned about 20 something pieces of legislation when uh, the Crown negotiators on the other side were only interested in our history. We had to learn about all of them. And so the leadership parts came and was getting pushed into different roles and asked to do different roles. So it's, um, it's humbling to be um, lifted into these spaces, mm. but I wanted to try and um yeah test myself a bit more i'm i'm, mm -hmm. I'm anxious I'm, I'm i'm worried my stomach's been tight for the last week because people are talking uh, talking on facebook but I, I need my nieces and nephews and kids to see that you can come from topiri not away here huntley and make a difference um in terms of influence and and whilst i'm being asked to like, hey, would you go and stand for the tribal parliament for Waikato? I don't need to. There's 120 of our people there. Where are the spaces that we're not? Yeah. Where are the spaces that yeah. need circulating? And, and well energy came up. I was asked to stand with this group. We fortunately were uh, our current trustees. <coughs> so I got a better chance and I'm learning a bit yeah. more about politics. Yes. And um, once I did a bit more research and obviously talked to my wife, we thought it would be a good thing for us. Uh, for exposure for Māori, for Waikato, um, and also to make a difference to the iwi as in, hey, let's keep line prices down, let's distribute back to those communities and make our marae, our league clubs, or aware of these type of fundings that are available, and then in the household try and save money. And so I'm seeing this as a, a step and a little test if I make it. And, um, and also... Yeah, sorry. Yep. Sorry. I was just going to say, and also, I suppose, looking at the bigger picture in terms of the ripple effect that it can have on whānau, you know, communities, the iwi, hapu, marae, you know, if you can make a difference there, it just has this ongoing ripple effect. And I'm um, reading your bio before we came on. I mean, you're very motivated, it, it appears in your bio that you're very motivated by you know, I don't like to use this word, but almost like servitude to your people, you know, serving your people, um, giving and getting the best for your people. Would that be a kind of a true statement in terms of, you know, your yeah. motivation? Yeah. I think it, it has to be. 
It can't be um, glory or money or it has to be uh, that spark to go there. And, and I've got such a big family. Um, I want to show them that we can do these things. And hearing, it's rewarding. Um, so, so I'm not trying not to promote myself, but as chair of Smart Waikato, seeing rangatahi understand what type of employment opportunities are out there and, and introducing them to employers so they know where they need to go has been quite rewarding emotionally, seeing these kids, uh, these um, 14 to 16-year-olds, um, really understanding what they want to do with their, their employment. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's just rewarding. And um, my mum was the same. You know, uh, when she passed yeah. away last year, a lot of people that came to talk talked about how they lived with us. I can't remember, I was too young, but mum would always open the door. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, just trying to carry that legacy on. My mum's Auntie, Auntie Donna, are there any questions that you'd like to ask Julian? Um, well, firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge Julian. He's such a humble man, uh, yeah. um, and I think he he... he I uh, will do his iwi, his hapu, and his marae uh, proud. Um, and, and I don't see it as the end of his political career. I only see it as the beginning. Um, and, and I want to acknowledge, too, that, that it takes courage, a lot of courage, uh, um, to put your hand up uh, in this political space. Um, but I want to total you, Julian, uh, when you say, you know, we're there, not for ourselves, but to drive the kaupapa that we're passionate about. And, and it's usually usually always about the advancement of our people. So, yeah. Kia ora. And, 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 you know, it's, it's just awesome. It's just awesome uh, to see would, him putting this. I think it's make a statement around um, um, politics because I, I was kind of thinking as he was talking about, you know, moving into that well energy space and potentially becoming a trustee, is this a potential move into the political arena at any point, Jules? Um, oh, I, I, won't, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, <laughs> I think um, Che remembers, I put up a post last year with the regional council elections and I was really upset that um because we're on the maori roll i didn't get to vote i only got to vote for the maori seat on there and there was only one yeah. person so i didn't even get a vote and then not only that of the general seat there were four seats available and only six people stood imagine if we'd put someone in there so i me and many others didn't get to vote for the majority of the council and then in the end yes. we didn't even get to vote because there was no there was only one person to vote for and it just gets me a little bit riled up and, and a few people figure that's that's not right. So maybe regional council, I'd be, because then that would stay in my natural resource space. Um, <laughs> yeah. that, that would be a perfect, perfect space for you. And, and I hear what you're saying, Julian, because uh, there are a number of barriers uh, um, to our people uh, even trying to vote. Uh, um, and my husband, I was really shocked and surprised because he voted online, and you know who he would have voted for. But um, but he, he it took him a while, but he was determined to 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 um, uh, to be successful in that process. Since COVID nineteen lockdown, um, he's come become a bit more savvy on 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 the laptop and with the internet. But there are barriers, you know, if you know what I'm saying, and that's another barrier, unfortunately. So we we need to have a real conversation about what are the barriers to our mm. people actually voting, be it at a local level or at a, a central government level. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and yeah. I, I think we can do it. Um, uh, you know, we're making slow progress, but it's progress nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> we just. But I would like to see our, our people populate other areas. Like my brother I talked to him today, hadn't heard of Well Energy Trust until I sort of put my name for it. And it made me wonder, like, oh, it actually makes a difference in the household. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so hopefully if I get on, I can improve that awareness. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, I, from what I know, Jules, you're doing a great job so far. We're looking forward to seeing your light shine even further than what it's already shone and we look forward to seeing you and 
and your future really and um, I'm sh and just quickly before we move to our next speaker um, uh, we may, I'm making an assumption that what your mother taught you you will now teach your boys when you go up to the Hakiri Mata and you go down by the Awa yes yes yeah absolutely we might do things a little bit differently like we don't have to get as wet when we go down to the Awa <laughs> <laughs> now, the principles, um, the principles of Kaiti Tanga will still be taught. Yeah. Lovely, mm. lovely. Uh, we'll uh, move to our next speaker, but we'll get you to come back on a bit later so we can all have a all because it would be great to have a all on your viewpoint um, from an environmental perspective with regards to when we were in Rahui and the impacts that that had on the environment. But thank you for now. We'll speak Good. to you again Good. soon. And now we're going to um, welcome as our next speaker, the very gorgeous, the very handsome, he's really quite charismatic, the very dapper Moko Tawariki. No maharamai, welcome Moko to Māori Conversations this evening. Take yourself off mute, please. <laughs> Kia ora tui ana. Kia ora. Kia ora dona. <laughs> Okay. Are you a little bit lost for words there, Moko? Oh, that sort of introduction. Wow, mate. I mean, I don't think I've ever, ever been introduced like that before. So, um, <laughs> oh, don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, for once he's speechless. So, again, um, Moko and, and our whānau go back almost 20 years. Moko is the godfather to um, our oldest, um, Māori Ora, who's just turned 17. And it's been a little while since I've seen you, Moko, and it's really lovely to see you this evening. Can you please introduce yourself, what it is that you do, and a little bit about your whānau. Kia ora. Yep. Uh, yep. So, um, Tauperi Te Maunga, uh, Waikato Te Awa. Tainui te waka, uh, waikato te iwi, ngāti naho, uh, te hapū, maurea te marae, um, ko moko tawari ki taku ingoa, te punei au ki rāhui pokeka, uh, moho ana au ki kirikiri roa nai nai. Uh, what do I do? Oh, um, well, I currently... Um, my passion is around, uh, I guess, well-being, and not necessarily just you know people's well-being, but our mm. environmental well-being. Mm. And so, um, the last couple of years, I've been um, gone back into the sector where I initially um, cut my teeth in uh, when I uh, started um, creating a career for myself which was in the social services sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, these last, uh, probably this last 12 months, I uh, found myself uh, in the courtroom advocating for rangatahi, uh, who uh, uh, where, where a judge is um, about uh, to send them either to a residence for a three to six month term, or is there some sort of support that... Uh, my words are going to offer that judge to potentially help change their decision uh, where we look at putting stronger supports around that young person's whānau. So uh, prior to that, I uh, was at Waikato Tainui with, the, uh, with Jules um, and uh, working on the Waikato Expressway was my primary project. Mm -hmm. So as I heard Jules talk about doing the cultural impact assessment for the Huntley section uh, all those years ago, well, I was responsible for coming in later on and sort of um, putting it into action, I guess. Wow. Yeah, so, mm. and, and how many children do you have, Moko? I've got four of my own uh, and my partner and I, um, well, she's got a, she's got a daughter. 10 year old daughter and so at any given time we have five kids in this household plus two adults wow 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 <laughs> and i just want to ask how how old is eva how old are the and tiari and boy and how old think, are they all now 
I think they want to be older than they need to be. But uh, <laughs> Eva's only 15 and Tiari's 13. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um, but I think I, I think Eva's nearly as tall as Modi Ora. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's lovely to see our kids grow up, eh? I think it's, wow, I do recall, actually, when I first met you, um, you and a there was a group of friends and you all you all still friends to this day. And mm. I know that you used to go and sleep, if I can recall way back, you used to go and sleep where you'd look after, say, troubled rangatahi or rangatahi who uh, were having uh, some challenges. Yes, um, yes. So it's really interesting to hear you um, still kind of doing that work um, mm. but from – from another angle in terms of advocacy in court. Just mm. just touching on a few things. One, if I can just touch on the environmental um, kaupapa for, for a moment. You know, uh, the world was really a bit crazy. I mean, it's a bit crazy at the moment too, but prior to Rahui, was, everyone was going at this really crazy pace and I think the environment was taking a huge, it was taking a huge toll on the environment and then all of a sudden you know we were made to stop everyone stop we're all gonna you've got no choice you've just got to stop right now sometimes I wonder whether the the fact that we were in this kind of cyclic kind of cycle of just going crazy or well, felt like we were just you know constantly on the spinning wheel was actually reflective of what the environment was going through because when we all stopped and when we all became quiet suddenly the environment kind of just came to life. You know, you could hear the money so much more. We would, we were often going and sitting by the hour nearly every day and just, it was clear. It was just really um, beautiful to be by. Just wondering what was your whakaro and did, you know, what's your whakaro on that time? Because there were lots of things across the world that we saw where environment just really came to life, you know? Mm, mm, yeah, absolutely. No, I think um, uh, Rangi, uh, Rangi Nui and Papa Tuanuku were given opportunity mm. to breathe, uh, mm. to replenish. And um, mm. I think if we were to consider uh, if that sort of um, uh, 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 isolation time should become something normal uh, mm. for, for our country, uh, that may not necessarily be such a bad idea. Uh, yeah. To be quite honest, um, uh, and I agree. Uh, there were times when, during the month of April, uh, you could go outside and look up, and you'd actually see the stars when you're in the city. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily happened that much. And so, yeah. you've taken off all those um, all those vehicles off the roads and households and whatever activity polluting the air. Uh, if we think that pollution doesn't exist in our own space world, then we are largely disillusioned, disillusioned because it is here. And so going out there and being able to see the stars at night uh, mm. was almost was almost like a like a treat. Something wasn't mm. it? I just and and did you go by the hour? Or do are you easily? Did you have easy access to the hour at all? Uh, yes. Yep. I, I, I guess. Where I live now is probably about the closest I'm going to be able to get to the awa, but I would consider myself to be very, very close to the awa. I'd say it's about a good 30 metres away from my home. Wow. wow. So we, did, we, were, yeah, did. we were able to have, uh, you know, regular walks, bike rides mm -hmm. uh, along the awa uh, mm. during the, the lockdown period. Um. And, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously uh, the river and its river levels is controlled by uh, companies mm -hmm. further up mm -hmm. the river. river. And so um, on days when it was nice and sunny, you would expect the water to be quite low, uh, mm. but it was actually quite high and there was no rain and et cetera, mm. et cetera. And so it was, it was interesting taking the time to actually physically – monitor water levels mm. and to actually show that to the kids and say, oh, actually, we walked past here yesterday. We could see the sand. There was no rain. 
And then all of a sudden, the river is up almost a meter. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So raising their awareness, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And then, and, and it's interesting because now we've come out of the Rahui, isolation, lockdown, whatever it is you refer to it as. But, and now we've gone into this kind of uh, what seems like almost manic. It does seem a little manic. Perhaps in New Zealand we're a little bit more um, not sheltered from it, but we have got the, you know, we're fortunate enough that we were all very obedient, stayed home, <laughs> and now we're in a place where we're COVID-free. But now we've had this Black Lives Matter, Kaupapa really come to the forefront uh, right mm. across um the world really but one of the things that I think it's highlighted is the injustices that are happening in the justice system whether that be in Aotearoa or whether that be in America would you what what are your thoughts on what's happening at the moment with that given that the, the mahi that you're doing in the courts Muko? oh you know our justice system is, is probably probably one of the worst or uh, in the world uh, uh. To be quite honest, um, you, you, you'd bring a bring a person that's committed some of the most heinous crimes. I mean, you put Hitler up in our uh, justice system, he'll probably get community service. Uh, that's how bad it is. Uh, and for uh, Pacific Island Maori in particular, who come through that system, uh, we're, we're we're losing straight away. So we're never ever really going to win in that space unless we have, you know, people like Donna that are going to actually look a little bit deeper than the crime or the issue that are, that we are presented with when we go into that space. Um, and what is it that actually has um, brought us to this, brought us to be before a judge and for whatever crime they say we have committed. And so uh, the Black Lives Matter issue uh, hasn't just necessarily brought to the forefront some of the injustices that, the Māori face in this country in particular uh, it's actually brought to issues everything else uh, that has suppressed our voice uh, in, a, in a justful way um, and I believe natural justice of some kind is finding its way to things like statues um, and slowly getting them uh, removed from our know from from our yes. public spaces and I think um, you know for Timmy might be to really mm. uh, put that particular piece of iconage if you want to call it that uh, on this uh, uh, take a a hammer to it mm. um, he really put counsel on notice yes and said and said to them you know at some point I might not be successful this time around. Uh, but there will become a day when this statue will be gone. And um, yesterday or whenever it was gone. Oh, today. Uh, today. Today. Oh, you yes. know, it was yesterday, wasn't it, that it was yesterday. removed? Yes. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, I, I attribute um, that success and that sort of um, outcome to to somebody like Timmy, uh, who was bold enough to actually take to it uh, with the understanding, actually, I'm going to get arrested for this, potentially. Yeah. Uh, but he had a stronger message that he wanted to send, not only to the council, but actually to the whole city, mm. to everybody. And um, yeah. and it worked. Um, Auntie Donna, what's your view on the statues now that Mokul's raised that and that statue um, in particular being removed? Uh, firstly, I just want to acknowledge Moko. Uh, we, we've known each other for a while as well, and um, we actually work in, in the same space, uh, um, doing, doing uh, uh, different things, but working in the same space. So, you know, oranga, oranga tangata, oranga whenua. So, so that, that, that's our space, and in particular within the criminal space. Um, in regards to, to what's happened in Black Lives Matter, uh, um, you know, all around the world, uh, people of colour uh, really understand that. And all around the world, people of colour uh, um, have been affected, I guess, by by the state and the state police force. And, and this 
this is not a new thing for Māori, you know, in regards to issues. It goes right back to colonisation when they set up the uh, constabulary. So, so this has been an ongoing issue for 180 years plus. Um, and, and to and I guess Black Lives Matter was the tipping point of all of that because uh, African Americans have been protesting, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, the the knee protest, kneeling pro uh, protest. I mean, that was pretty powerful when when uh, African American um, uh, sportsmen started kneeling. So so they've been protesting for four hundred years. I, I guess guess against oppression. What's I think uh, important to recognise within Aotearoa is that our the racism and oppression has been a lot more subtle, and mm. sometimes that's actually more dangerous because yes. it, it's it happens behind closed doors. Uh, and I I want to say that in regards to Matua um, to me. Uh, um, uh, it was a real privilege because I was on the hikoi yesterday with um, Protect Pukia Ahua um, and I happened to be walking with Matua and, and we had just found out that the statue has, had been taken away. So, so that was quite a powerful moment. Mm. Yeah, I think it's raising a lot of... Um Questions too for a lot of people around the name of streets. I know that that's um, a bit of a corridor that I've heard over the last two days. Um, and I think that's another thing, you know, that's raising some concern, uh, given the fuck up of, of the names of some of those people in terms of the injustices that we encountered as Māori uh, from certain individuals. Um, Moko, I just wanted to go back to the justice system if we could for um, a little while and then I'm going to ask Jules to come back on. Um, Moko, um, how, do we, how do we break through these kind of um, biases that happen within the um, justice system? I mean, I know that um, Donna's family has actually uh, encountered some injustices themselves. Um, I know my boys were simply walking along the street and got pulled over, and I got phone calls, you know, from the police. And I'm, and you know, as a mother of teenage boys, and you know, as the mother-in-law of a very handsome young man, uh, Donna, mm -hmm. I just wonder how how do we how do we teach our people? what their rights are when, when perhaps we're unaware because it's interesting to watch you know there's i don't know if you've noticed but there appears to be a lot of police at the moment out on the roads and and, and it doesn't give us a sense of feeling safe it gives us a feeling a feeling unsafe so i'm just wondering how do we how do we sorry that's a big question but i'm just wondering what's can you provide us with some um, guidance for our people around how we deal with these things when we're confronted with them, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that is a very loaded question. Yes, and, um, yes. I don't have there's, mine. There's, <laughs> it's okay. And there are lots of different responses to it. Yeah. I guess the, uh, what I might do is, is answer it from the from the perspective of the young people that I work with um, and, and, uh, and advocate for uh, in that justice space. And for, for many of them, uh, the biggest, um, one of the biggest things that's missing out of their lives is their understanding of who they are. And so they, they don't know their, their pepeha, their whakapapa, um, <laughs> And so there is a, a lack of cultural connectedness, if it were, uh, with, I would say, 95% of the young people that we live with, uh, um, work with. And so that would be a, a starting ground um, uh, if we wanted to try and combat uh, Māori presence in the justice system. Mm. Another one, I mean, sometimes understanding the law is great. Um, however, I think for a lot of the young people, um, it, it, it's about understanding 
the greater consequences of their actions to their parents, uh, to their siblings, uh, that I think is something that they they actually genuinely do do observe when you are talking to them about uh, other people, because for Maori they are quite conscious about um, particularly their elders. Uh, while we may think that they lack respect for their elders, uh, when you sit down and have a conversation with them one to one, and you talk about elders, kaumatua, our koroheke and our ruruhi, uh, there is an, an there is a, a a respect there that they, they typically do have, but just don't know how to, you know, manifest that because I've never yeah. had anybody role model it for them and so they lack some of the things that you and I and Donna we would consider these things just to be you know quite normal quite day to day just roll of the mill stuff whereas for them actually they've never seen it at all yeah you know and so for us finding some types of interventive interventions can be quite easy however the state and its punitive way of of administering consequences uh, is to actually lock them up at a young age, uh, which does nothing for them because it just prepares them for the bigger prisons. And so that is mm-hmm. the current justice, justice that um, our rangatahi are subjected to and uh, the facts and history and the statistics tell us that actually uh, we're just preparing them uh, for the bigger prisons, and I believe people in that correctional space um, welcome that because it keeps them in a job. Mm. Oh, I find that so mumai. I find that so sad. Um, mm. But uh, thank you. I'd love to. I'd love to hear you talk to you more about the smoko, and I'd love to hear your views on this. And um, I think for some of our, especially for some of our young men. Um, they freeze and they just, uh, you know, and they just get lost in terms of mm. when they're confronted with people in a uniform, especially police. You know, even mm. before they might have done anything wrong, but they're kind of thinking, what did I do wrong before they, before mm. they, yeah, they even approach. So I'm going to welcome <laughs> Julian back. In- Sorry, Donna. Yes, no, bring Julian in too because uh, um, he works with Rangatahi. I just wanted yes. to say that. Uh, uh, corrections and jail is a business, and and, and when there's a fakaro around business, then 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 you know uh, our people serve that business. Um, do, do prisons serve us? No, they don't. And um, you know, as I've stated in other conversations, I got into the justice system by accident, uh, really, and I've been through from I guess the process from A to Z. And I was able to identify the systemic problems within our system and, and realise that um, there are a lot of people within our justice system who who, um, who have created, I think, a, a monopoly over our people where our people are the ones that prop that system up. So, you know, we've got to turn that around. We've got to turn that around. Um, acknowledging uh, what Moko is saying in regards to our uh, our Moko Kuna Tamariki Rangatahi, but you got to remember that's intergeneration, intergenerational oppression of our people, and and, and we're seeing the results of that now. But anyway, yeah. kia ora, Julian. <laughs> kia ora. Um, <laughs> I'd love to talk to you more about all of you actually more um, about that. I, I once had someone joke that um, or make reference to the fact that I think at the moment they may be extending, making an, an incredible investment into an extension out at Waikiria, which is just out of Te Amutu. And someone made a kind of reference or joke to, oh, yeah, they're just, that's another whare for our whānau, you know, another another house for our whānau to go. And I was like, wow. And, um, yeah, I just, I just, I really, um, probably because I don't work in this space, but I kind of wonder how do we kind of move that? How do we shift that dial, you know? And I think it's by the work that each of you are doing in this space. Um 
Auntie Donna, do you have any, or uh, any of you, do you have any kōrero on that? How do we shift that? How do you move well, you those stats? You brought up a good point too, Anna, because you, you, you use the word housing. Unfortunately, there's more investment into prisons than there are in, into actually housing our whānau. So, so, you know, there's one issue and the answer at the same time. You want to keep our people out of prisons, then start putting them into uh, uh, um, warm, affordable homes. Yeah, and because Moko made a reference with regards to well-being, um, well, that's not really placing well-being at the forefront because you're actually looking at it as a reaction, not a, not a, not a proactive approach. It's kind of like a reactionary approach. We're going to wait for them to fall off the cliff. So... Do either of you, Muko or Julian, have an opinion on this? Probably. I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate with, with the smart waikato role and mental stuff that Muko sometimes brings us into. We, we try to work very hard on the preventative um, opportunities for our rangatahi. And it usually requires exactly what Muko said, valuing yourself mm. first and mm. uh, showing them things outside of the space they're currently in. So they can see something different and um, presenting them with more opportunities. I mean, preventative is where we want to be in that space, but unfortunately it doesn't always work. And, and yeah. thankfully people like Moko and Donna that can stand there and help with diversion um, and, and stop them before they get into the to the, to the tumbler, to the, to the cycle. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think preventative space um, is, is, is where we're trying to trying to sit and help our rangatahi. And, and even, even, sorry. Sorry, even what we've seen over COVID, mm. um, we were all home being teachers. So yes. teaching, teaching our adults that haven't had a successful education um, so that they can teach their kids is is, a, is an important area. I think adult education needs, um, needs a bit more support as well. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Mukul, do you have any fakaro you'd like to share or any kōrero you'd like to share? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, a psyche shift for society uh, to um, think that prisons uh, is not the way to go is a huge, is a huge step that needs to be taken. Uh, when you have political parties... Uh, particularly uh, um, like National, for example, and New Zealand First, who are strong advocates of prisons and locking mm. up our people, um, then you actually have a strong demographic that will actually support that. Uh, and then uh, it's not so difficult for public taxpayers' money to go being spent on that uh, mm. because uh, there has been a fear that has been conjured up and instilled within our society. Uh, we need to actually move away from that type of thinking and that type of scaremongering. Yes, there are some people who actually are best um, put in some of these sorts of places because they are very dangerous and we accept that. But we also accept that actually there are some people, men and women and rangatahi, who have absolutely no business being mm. incarcerated uh, and would actually flourish and do well with some real good Māori supports out in their communities. And their, those communities and those supports exist. So re-channel that resource back to yeah. uh, those and, and not necessarily channel it directly into iwi either, but channel it into those mm. organisations that actually do have uh, uh, the good skills um, to, you know, reputation, know-how, how to actually address some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, you know, uh, when you took a, you know, you mentioned that some of our um, rangatahi in particular have a disconnection. Is this an opportunity for us to bring them back to their whenua, to bring them back to, places uh, like the awa, um, like the environment, to bring them back into the nahire. Uh, are those kind of environments, you know, part and parcel of what you kind of teach them in terms of helping them to 
hononga or connect to where they're from or who they are? Yeah, I mean, when you when you think about you know our our world pre-colonial times, uh, we were you know at one we were that environment as much as it was us. And yeah. for those of us who still hold fast to those sorts of teachings and understandings and embrace it and embody it uh, and manifest it as much as we can, uh, we we need to look at how do we do that in this contemporary world that we live in, um, mm. with so many different influences. That's mm. that's where we do need to to go. We do need to head into that space. Um, but like a lot of things, it becomes clouded by a whole lot of political opinion and mm. and, and and red tape and uh, yeah, it, it, it takes it, it takes some very unique people to actually put that aside and just go, well, kia ora, you carry on fighting that fight, and I'm just going to carry on actually. Uh, helping with the well-being of this particular person over here in the meantime, because mm. I'm probably the best mentor that they're ever going to have um, before they turn 18 and they end up inside jail. Yeah. Can, can I just um, throw in a, a, a few stats? So, so we're quite willing as taxpayers to to fork out over a billion dollars to build a new prison. And you wow. can't have People. We're quite willing as taxpayers to fund the whole correction and justice system, which cost over the last two years more than all our treaty settlements put together. So when you start weighing up the, uh, uh, um, I guess, the dollars, the budgets, you can see why uh, uh, housing, uh, uh, housing our people in prisons become beneficial for those that benefit from it. And, and we just got to call that out, eh? We just got to call mm -hmm. that out. I really acknowledge what Julian and, and, and Muku are doing, you know, with our rangatahi. And it's not easy mahi. You know, I work in that space as well. And, it, and it's actually quite a heartbreaking space to be working in. Yeah. And you hear the stories. And then you hear the stories of of, of, of whole whanau being in prisons, of... of um, uh, Mukupuna, uh, 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 Pākeke and Karaua being in prison. Those those things are heart-wrenching. Heart but then when you, you look at it from a, a, a higher view, I guess, from the bu budgets and the po political sphere and see where that money's been funneled to and follow that money, then it becomes quite clear that people want us in prison. Yeah. And... and that's more than changing an attitude. That's calling that's calling that bullshit out. Sorry for for the word, but that's calling that bullshit out. And that's part of the reason why I got involved with the Māori Party. I just had to. Sorry, I had, just had to add my two cent piece. In there. Oh, I think and, your two cents was more about passion, Auntie, than about your two cents. <laughs> Julian, do you have any fakar or kōrero you'd like to share? I, I absolutely support what Donna said, and the Māori Party needs to be there because. It gives people like myself confidence. I know that we have the Māori seats, but having a party there that's put there by the people just gives you confidence that that's who they're going to represent. And yes. you're right, when you think about um, the Central Rail Link stuff in Auckland, who's gone well over budget into the two or three millions, a tunnel being built there, it's over four billion, sorry, one, two, three billion, and then a tunnel built two years ago that's close to four billion dollars. It's because you get a return. They're all derived and given funding because there's a benefit cost ratio that it achieves and prisons are the same there's a mm. benefit for the people that invest in it there's a benefit in the road because it stimulates the economy in auckland but giving out treaty settle money is there's no i i suppose if there was a benefit cost ratio we would fail that in the government or financial eye and say so they don't give us that that funding that true recognition of where we could actually help our people directly and so i, I agree with you donna I, the priorities don't sit well with me and our mm. people it's it's yeah. it's not nice mm. Mm. Yeah. What you've seen. it's also kind of um you know sorry we're, flick, we're flicking a bit between environmental and um native justice system but also i often um very personal for Karu here. I often think the cheek of you fellas trying to tell us how to look after the hour, 
or how to look after our moana or look after our nahiri. I often think, cheek of you fellas, because who do you think the heck was looking after it, you know, like 200 years ago before you fellas landed on our shores, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and if you think about where uh, Taio was at and where it's at now, um, I'm just going to ask you, how is our awa looking, Julian? Julian, how how is our awa doing? You know? I think she looks beautiful. I tell yeah. everyone to change their thoughts. Stop saying she's degraded. Uh, when you went through the treaty settlement process, you generally have to have the grievance, and the grievance for the awa was crown. You confiscated. You, you took away. You shifted us away from uh, fulfilling our responsibilities. And so the grievance was she's unwell now. Uh, you need to help us uh, get her better so that she can ultimately look after herself. But we need to stop that now. We need to say she's beautiful. Remind everyone she's beautiful so we go back to her. In terms of um, it doesn't matter what quality she uh, she is, water quality to the scientists, Moko still going to jump off the bridge and go for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my kids. gosh, can he do that at his age? I don't know if he can getting a bit more. old there. <laughs> Hey, no, no problem here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I yeah. think that you're, you're, you're right uh, um, about our why, and that's how we look at our why, because we know our why nurtures us, nurtures us and, and I guess for me, um, you know, I don't have a problem in saying polluters, you pay. You want to pollute, you pay, and, and let's um, uh, look at uh, those that are, uh, are using sustainable methods and reward them so you know so we're encouraging people uh, to look after the whenua because what happens on the whenua ultimately has an impact on our way right. mm. and our way is more important because with our way there is no whenua eh? so so well they go hand in hand but um you know i just want us to get to get real and part of it is is having marty in this space because we know our, our way has been commodified we know we are kaitiaki of our way, uh, uh, depending on where we're from, um, but we need to put a stake in the ground and say that 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 you know, uh, from a kaitiaki perspective, there's there, there's an analogy or analogous. It's analogous to ownership. Yeah. In, in regards to those that are managing and controlling that whole kaupapa, they see it as ownership. We mm -hmm. as Māori don't. Need see it as ownership but we've got a we've got a challenge that kaupapa because if we only always say kaitiaki they get they can easily usurp that and we've seen it with motiti island and we haven't got enough uh, uh time to go into that kaupapa but we see how the law changes at will and, and both parties do it i call it a different fin on the tanifa is what i call it or or or, or uh, different wings of the same bird um, so, so we've just got to again call that out because if we don't, uh, um, that has an impact on, on not just our, our Waikato Awa, but all the other puna and, and waterways that feed into our our Awa as well. But sorry, yeah. I don't want to get that in this. <laughs> no, I think I think it's time. Time is is of you know, is vital at the moment with regards to calling things out. I think we're at a time where um, a lot of us are calling things out, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of whether that be our justice system or whether that be our awa or the many other uh, kaupapa that we've followed. Now, we've actually been asked a number of questions this evening and I'm not sure we're going to get to them, but just one here, uh, just quickly. Should we utilise marae-based incentives to help youth? Any Fakaro from any of you with regards to that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely we should. Um, and there are lots of different creative ways in how that can be done and how Marae can actually um, do that. Uh, just um, uh, uh, on Thursday, you know, I was um, supporting the Department of Corrections to help, uh, you know, get a house... Uh, for some men, four four bedroom house. Now, uh, along the way, we went and met with many different iwi down the coasts, and um, uh, what we eventually eventually ended up doing was talking with uh, iwi from here, Tuhoi, Tuwhareta, Kikawero, Atiawa, 
presenting ideas to them around actually uh, if we were to put a house on your land uh, this is the type of arrangement that we can enter into and uh, what sort of programs do you think might be ideal to actually help with the uh, I don't want to use their word uh, rehabilitation but with the reconnection uh, mm. of their mana motu with, with their mana motu haketanga back to their own people and so mm. I believe those are the sorts of conversations that the Crown needs to be having mm. with, uh, ha with hapu, with iwi, and even uh, with marae, because mm. there are marae that are actually equipped to pick up some of those uh, roles and not just be a venue to go and have a, a, a koti rangatahi um, hearing. Uh, there are actually other things that they could be doing that um, they just need a chance. So, absolutely. Mm. Well, we've run out of. Oh. Sorry, Aroha, my Jules. Do you want to quickly say a little bit? Um, about what Michael said, I agree. And all we have to make sure is that we don't compete against each other in these spaces, mm. Mm. rather support each other in different mm. areas. Let's not have the Iwi Authority competing with a, 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 you know, like um, one of the Runanga or Marae. Mm. It's, mm. it's figure out who's best to do what and then support them. Yeah, yes. and 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 time to fight is like when Timmy might be stood up. You know, when what did our Tanifa do? They stood up to warn us and protect us. People like William Gallagher said some bad words about us, and so that woke the Tanifa. That woke the Timmy Maipis. And what he's asking us to do is do exactly what you said to him. We need to wake up and stand up, and um, and be those Tanifa mm -hmm. like our like our Pepeha says, Pepeha Tanifa. So stand up for our communities. Uh, so I'm just mm. really happy to be here tonight. So thank you. Congrats. Donna, you've got our support. Our household support. Mm. Lovely to see you too, Donna. <laughs> and I'll, look I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Cheer, my buddy. Cheer. It's been a great corridor to the, this evening, and I thank you both uh, so much for uh, sharing your whakaaro and your corridor, and it's been a wonderful insight, and I'm sure we could talk for another hour about this, about these kinds of kaupapa. Um, Auntie Donna, is there anything you'd like to say before we finish off? And um, then I'm going to do a few plugs before we do. Okay. I just want to thank uh, uh, Moko and, and Julian uh, for coming on tonight. It's been an awesome korero. And, and, you know, the two kaupapa that we talked about were, were all really passionate about, and I'm sure we could have gone on for another hour. <laughs> yeah. Yes, another hour. I think I think Auntie Donna's frozen, so I'm just gonna um just quickly find just a reminder that on Tuesday, um um Auntie Donna, who's our representative for um Māori Party, uh no Hauraki Waikato, will be at Kirikiroa Marae. Is that right, Tua? Can you give me the thumbs up? Yes, and just also if you've got space in your front yard and you're willing to put up a sign leading up to the election, then please let them know if you're willing to volunteer. And also, if we've missed a number of questions this evening, Auntie Donna, is a way that people can contact you directly if they'd like to talk to you? Um, they can go on to my Facebook page, Donna Pocket Phillips, and then they can send me a message through there and I, I respond through that process. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Um, so now, thank you again, Koto Katoa. Thank you for listening to us this evening. Um, wow, it's been a wonderful corridor once again. And we're now going to hand it over to, as I said, the incredibly gorgeous and charismatic Moko Tawariki. Over to you, please, Moko. Oh, kia ora tato. Uh, thank you very much, Tuiana, for hosting this hui. Uh, it's good to see you. You're looking very well, as always. And um, Donna, um, I think it's great to, to have your vibrancy as our candidate for the Hauraki Waikato electorate, and um, to my brother Jules, um, uh, he's a he's he's been a good role model for many of us, his peers, and um, you know he's probably one of the first ones to step outside and take this sort of um, position that he's taking, and so uh, we're riding behind him to to support him uh, yeah. onto the board, the well board. Um, so, yep. Well, kia ora tātou. Māku tēnei wahanga he whakakapi ana mō te karakia. Ah.
Taki no mai tēnei kariki a kia tupina te kia io, io nui io roa, io ngā taketake ato wānanga tēnei mātou e whakakoro piki ani kia rātou tahi ano i te hunga wairua. E taki no mai tēnei tahi ano ta mauri ki rungi a rātou tahi ano i te pauri ta pani me te rawa kore. Kia tia ki noho ki ko tō mātou nei ki ingi tū hei te apō te tau te whero whero te tua whetu. Rātou tahi ano te hunga māwiwi, nei ake no te kariki a kia pā tahi ano ta mauri ki rungi a rātou tahi. Kia pai o rāki ana i a rātou tahi anō, kia mauri au mai te wairua tapu ki rungi anō, i a tātou mō tēnei, pō, rire, rire hau, pai mā. Pō mā rire. Pō mā rire. Pō mā rire. Pō mā rire.